to lift up the name of Jesus, amen. We're going to have our doxology followed by our devotion. Blessing to be here this morning. How many of us glad to be here? 
Amen. Amen. Even though we had a crisis, God still blesses to be here. Amen. Amen. We don't know when it'll be over, but we know one thing is this. We're here by the grace of God. Amen. 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 We're going to continue on with our devotion. We want everyone to join in. Sing with uplifted voices. Amen. Amen. A charge, Lord, to keep. A charge, Lord. A charge, Lord. Down to the 
for this day. For this day. So we never know what tomorrow may bring. 350. Yes, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're going to continue this service by singing hymn number 350. Come ye that love the Lord, and let your joy be known. Join in a song of sweet accord, and thus surround the throne. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. But children of the heavenly King may speak their joys abroad. Come ye
in heaven. Holy is thy name. Uh, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is already done in heaven. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to share in this labor of love together. You've been so good and so gracious to us. You just didn't bring us part of the way, but you brought us all of the way. And it's just your grace and your mercy. While we have slipped and slumbered and possibly deviated from your word, you've still been good to us. And it's a true fact that we can shout it out that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And so we salute you today for once again sparing our lives to get right where we possibly have been wrong. And so we come into this place and gathered in your name to worship you in spirit and in truth. For we seek to worship you and you seek for us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Because you simply want to bless us. So you thank me, Lord God, that you've already blessed us to get up this morning and put on our raiments to come out to your Sunday school lesson yes. to let us know about the power of the gospel of God. Yeah. It's righteousness. Right. We thank you for your word yes. for it does have power, power. power. to raise a dead man up yes, and allow him to walk and live again. Well. We thank you, Lord, thank you. for all these unmerited gifts that you want to offer unto us. Yes. But we slack in coming forward and saying, I yield, I yield. I can't hold out any longer. We know that you love us because you give heaven's best for us. While we were yet without strength, you died for the ungodly. And sure enough, all of us was unrighteous. But you look beyond our faults. And you saw that we needed help from on high. So you sent Jesus. And he gave his life that we might have a right to stand here today. And I'm glad about it. And I think I have other witnesses can say I'm glad about it. So we thank you once again for this precious moment, this priceless opportunity. Because we might not get this chance again. But why are we here? We want to say thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for following the instructions of your father. Thank you for allowing them to take your life. Thank you for allowing them to put you in a tomb. And thank you most of all for getting up with all power and authority in your hand. For you yell out, I can destroy, but I will defend. Simply because you loved us so much. Well, and if I harmed anyone yeah. along life's journey, oh, yeah. I apologize. Yeah. Well, oh, I apologize. Mama. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Once again, Thank you. for defeating Satan. So we do have victory, victory. in Jesus Christ. 
can't stop us from having victory. We might be in a shipwreck or in a storm, but the storm of life, it will rage. But we have one can stand out and say, peace, be still. And the sea have to obey your power. So we thank you once again. And we pray for the man of God that he build us up with the word of God today. Encourage us because we need encouragement. We pray now that your word will be heard throughout this service and the ones that are listening in. It's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ that we do pray. And all believing heart says amen and praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank Doesn't grow. When they first started the night, the day, yeah, it was y'all was jumping and everything. Y'all done ran out of gas already. We're gonna have to find a way to pump this thing back up, okay? All right. On behalf of our Pastor L. Don Middleton, his staff, and uh, all the staff members at New Pleasant Grove to do all the work behind the scenes that you can't see, we uh, really appreciate. All the help we had over the weekend. We had a lot of stuff going on Friday, a lot of stuff going on Saturday. We was kind of busy. At this time, I'd like to recognize any visitors we may have in the building. Uh, I think we're still online. I think I would do online also. Uh, if we have any visitors anywhere, which I don't think we do, but would you please stand so I could recognize you? Okay. Everybody that's in here already belong to us. Okay, that works. Uh, the cl little house cleaning right here. Uh, in, the, in, the Allen, in the calendar, in your program, on the 13th of July, it says hospitality at 5.45 p.m. It is not happening. There will not be a hospitality meeting on the 13th at 5.45. Not that we had a whole bunch of people knocking the door to come anyway, but we just thought we'll put that out there. <laughs> okay, okay. this is what I got for you. This is what I did, especially for you guys, okay? This is called a prayer of hope. Thank God for life. Dear God, when I stand at the beginning of a new day, bless me with the vision to see the best of things to come. Wisdom to make good decisions 
And most of all, faith that you are walking with me every step of the way. Amen. Thought for the week. People change and things go wrong. But always remember, always remember, life goes on. That's my time. Amen. Y'all give it up for Brother James. <laughs> Man, he all right. Amen. Good morning, everyone. To those who are in the house and to those online, we greet you this morning in the name that is above all names, and that is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, who sits at the right hand right now interceding for us as we prepare to worship before him. Uh, leadership you all can prepare this morning as we prepare to give unto the Lord just a few brief remarks this morning. We want to um, congratulate and welcome our newest member to the retirement club, a sister Doretha Thomas has recently retired. Amen. I think. I think that's the third one this year. Yeah, Sister Burns. Was it this year, Sister Burns, or last year? End of last year. End of last year, Reverend Thomas. Anybody else retired this year? Amen, amen. I hope I'm not too far behind you. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Congratulations. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts to give unto the Lord, for God has been faithful to us. He has been continually faithful to us in the midst of it all. Prepare your gifts to give unto the Lord as he has blessed you. Amen. To those who are online, we have several platforms that you may give electronically. Cash app, give Lefi, as well as those who are in the house, you may use those platforms as well. God bless you. <clears throat> Father, we come this morning. We realize that we are just merely stewards of your resources, Lord God. We trust in that you will bless these gifts for the upbuilding of your kingdom's sake. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.
I'm striving Trying to make it Through this barren land But as I go from day to day I can hear my Savior say Trust me child Come on out Hold your hand I'm coming up Lord On the rough side Oh yeah Get hard sometimes. I hold, hold on, children. Yes, hold on. It's powerful. Oh yeah, I'm coming up, coming up, Jesus, on the rough side. Oh, the mountain.
I'm doing my best to make it in. I'm coming up, Lord. I'm coming up, Lord, yeah. We want you to stand up and join in with us. The mountain, oh Lord, but I must hold to God. Hold on, hold on, yeah. His powerful hand, oh Lord, I'm coming up, coming up, church, yeah. Yes. 
Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, I ain't going to stop you from praising him. No. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you know you made the devil mad. <laughs> because in spite of all that you're going through, you still lifted his name. <laughs> in spite of all that may be happening in your life, isn't that what they sung? If I be lifted up. If I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, I will draw. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm kind of stuck. Because uh, Deacon Ware and Deacon Phillips already preach. I'm kind of stuck in a little dilemma right here. I don't know. Y'all want to work? I don't, I don't know nobody responded. Y'all want a word? Y'all want a word on this side? Y'all want a word on this side? Jesus, when I think about Jesus, he, he's all right, all right, all right, he's all right, he's all right. so much freedom that comes when you can freely worship God. 
See, some of us may have all the answers, but there's many of us like me. If God don't show up, I don't know what the answer is. So this is why it's so important for us to come to church. The Bible tells us not to forsake the assembly. Let me, let me put on my Bible study hat real quick. Forsake means to ignore. Y'all know how to ignore people. We know how to ignore people, right? When you, when you forsake something. So when the writer who is inspired by God, he says, in the body of Christ, I've deposited gifts of inspiration, gifts of encouragement, gifts of hope, gifts of faith in the people. And there's some times when someone comes to church and they just kind of just going through the motion, just trying their best to make it, because they're coming up on the rough side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But they, 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 they press in to get here, because there's somebody else who just made it to their mountain, and they can't wait for the doors to open so they can come into the house and bless God for what he did for them. And when that person begins to release worship in the house, that exaltation moves in the atmosphere. And that person who'd been struggling, didn't know how they was gonna make it, all of a sudden they, they start to feel something moving. Amen, all of a sudden that sadness starts to, that disappointment start to, and the next thing you know, amen, they don't forget about their problems, they don't forget about what was distracting them because when your mind is focused on the Lord and when you call upon his name, he will move mightily. That's why we got to come to church. That's why we got to come to church. Because you don't know, you might have what somebody else needs today. And just by you showing up, and not forsaking or ignoring the importance of coming to church. See, that's, that's where the devil, uh, he, he thought that he was going to use COVID-19 to shut down the church. <laughs> but what he didn't understand, the church is not bricks and mortar and cement and pews <laughs> and lights and cameras. That, that, that ain't the church. My Jesus didn't die. For something you get at Home Depot. No, he, he died for people I'm looking at, people I'm seeing right now, people that's watching online, amen. You can never stop the church, amen, because God made the church. And he said, the gates of hell, I don't care what plot, what scheme, what trick, what darkness the devil tries, you can't be stopped. And baby, if we could ever individually understand you can't lose with God. God. Father, we thank you. Bless, honor, and worship you. We pray now in the name that cannot fail that by your divine Holy Spirit that you would orchestrate through the anointing, such an environment, God, that demons would tremble and be cast out. That sick minds and sick hearts and sick bodies, that sickness will be healed in the name of Jesus. God, we pray by your divine move of your Holy Ghost that dead lives will be resurrected in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for curses that will be broken in the name of Jesus. We thank you for yokes that will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the power to break every burden that's sitting upon the backs of your people. Because you have set us free. God, all we need to do is receive and believe by faith. Our freedom and our liberty is in you. 
Now, God, we thank you for the gift that's in the vessel. Pour out the gift. Pour out your voice. Pour out your heart. Pour out your concern. Pour out your desire among your people today. This is our prayer and our desire. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 6. Many of you have it marked from last week. Romans chapter number 6. I invite you all back to this passage of scripture in Romans chapter number 6. On last week, the Lord ministered to us from this passage of scripture. and We looked at verse number 23 that states, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the sermon title we gave was, Was It All Worth It? So this morning, and media, I do apologize to you. We do have a bonus scripture. And so, family, I would also ask that you would grab John chapter number 8. Uh, this is just a reference verse that I want to bring to light when we look at this text today. Our sermon scriptures will come from Romans Chapter number six, we want to read together verses 20 through 22, and then we're going to read as a companion scripture, John chapter eight, verses 31 through 32. If you are able, we do invite you to stand to your feet for the reading of God's word. Romans chapter number six, amen, and also John chapter number eight, verses 31 through 32. Let's read Romans chapter six. Verse 20 through 22, ready to read. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Amen. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32 read. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. You may have your seats. Amen. Paul says in Romans 6, in verse 20, 22, that now being made free from sin, I want to use that clause there to give the title of this, set, this text today, and the sermon title is, If It's Free, It's For Me. Everybody has heard that phrase. If it's free, it's for me. Amen. Anybody ever heard that phrase or used that phrase before? If it's free, volume and clarity to the text, amen, it is a word that is used in this text in regards to slavery. I want to make sure we're clear in that. And so, 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 so when we think about this sermon title, that what's, whatever's free, it's for me, amen, anybody in here other than me like free stuff? Okay. All right, all right, all right, amen. You may have had this situation, Brother Fred, somebody say, hey, man, listen, Let's go out to eat. Amen. you like, well, you don't say nothing, but you know in your pocket, they look shallow. Mm -hmm. They look shallow. And um, before you can get the words out your mouth, say, come on, I'm treating. And you like, if you treating, if it's free, let's eat. <laughs> so we, we, we like free stuff. And, and, and here is the mindset 
of the person who knows something is being made available for free. Number one, they understand that's available. So something is being offered and available to me, number one. Number two, I don't have to pay the price. So something's being available, something's being offered to me, I don't have to pay a price. All I have to do is receive what's freely being offered to me. Amen? And so that same mindset has to flood your mindset spiritually to understand that when Christ was resurrected from the grave, everything that you and I needed to live a life that satisfies and glorifies God has been freely given to us. It's been made available. I don't have to pay a price. All I got to do is believe and receive it. I'm going to work on this side over right here. See, I think some of us are struggling because you're trying to get what God has already given you. How are you going to work for something that God has already given you? That's works. And we have people through uh, more ignorance than anything, they're giving God works. And you're not saved by works. You're saved by faith. See, this is why I love when somebody who has no church background, no church history, and they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ because they ain't got all that garbage in the way. Amen. They hear it, they believe it, and they take off. That's what happened to the Apostle Paul, the author of this book. Paul was persecuting the church. He hated the church. He loved his religion and his tradition above all things. But what he didn't know, somebody had already looked at the draft picks. And God said, I see Paul from the University of Rome. Amen. And I want him to be a first round draft pick. And here's Paul on his way to do what he thought he wanted to do. Amen. And the commissioner came through the first. And in the first round, God chooses Saul of Tarsus. Saul is, let me calm myself down. Let me calm myself down. So here it is. Saul. <laughs> who thought he knew the way, <laughs> was humbled in the way. And immediately, God didn't waste no time. In three days, he went from persecuting the church to starting the church. <laughs> he went from killing Christians, amen, to having the power to resurrect the dead, amen. That happens when somebody understands it's being offered to me. I don't have to pay the price. All I've got to do is receive it. And I pray in the name of Jesus, whether you online or you in line, amen, or you in this house today, if you can just release your faith and understand there's nothing that you can work for, that God has already freely given it to you. Some of you trying to work two and three jobs to make ends meet. That's not what God has given you. If you just take your tithe and your offering by faith and give it unto the Lord, he said, I'll open the windows, windows of heaven. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all understand this principle. You not only don't have no job, amen, you don't have no income yet. But you have sowed seed, amen. And when you give, God makes sure it is returned unto you 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, and you didn't have to do no work because guess what? It was being offered, amen. I don't have to pay the price, and all I've got to do is receive. Amen, amen. I want to get a benediction right now, but I think it's some meat. Amen, there's some bone. Amen, there's some meat left on the bones right here. And so if it's free, it's for me, Paul. Paul talks to this church at Rome, and as I talk to you all who are here this morning, amen, we talked about last week, we gave the definition of sin, amen, and I, and I said this, and I'll say it again real briefly, we have a perverted mindset when it comes to sin, because man judges sins in category. God judges all sin, and all sin has already been paid for, and so our struggle is we have not come to the point to realize that God allowed Jesus to die, not for you to be bound by sin, but you to have dominion over sin. Can I tell you what that looks like? When you understand your freedom, amen, and what Christ has done for you, amen, even though somebody tries you and a cuss wants to rise up, you take authority over the cuss, 
amen, and you cast down the cuss because you know that good wine, amen, and bitter wine, amen, don't come out of the same vessel. So you tell that old man, you need to stay dead. Huh? We don't live like that no more. We don't cuss people out. We bless folks, amen. We don't shoot folks, amen. We pray for people. That's what happens when you understand what you possess. So the definition of sin, for those who weren't here last week, see the media, get the tape, amen, I said tape, get the CD. <laughs> sin means to miss the mark, to error, to wander from the path of righteousness, amen? And so what, 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 what Paul is simply saying, when, when, when God talks about sin, oh God, let me see if I can make this as simple as possible. God is saying, I have a place and a destination for all of my children, and I don't want you to miss it. You dealing with pain, and I've already given you healing. I don't want you to miss it. You, you, you dealing with demons that your daddy's daddy dealt with, amen, and I've given you deliverance. But because we're ignorant to what has been freely given to us, we stay in bondage. Let me see if I can unpack the text here today. So Paul, Paul, Paul tells the church at Rome, he said, listen, I want y'all to understand this concept there. He said, I want y'all to understand this clearly, and, and, and I do need to read this, amen. I, I, I ask you for your patience. I need to read a good chunk of this in Romans chapter number six so I can paint. He said, I can go ahead, so I'm going to do it, amen. And so in Romans chapter six, verse one, follow me now. He says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know you not that so many of us that were baptized into Jesus Christ was baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in the newness of life. Pay attention here closely. Let me see if I can give this in layman's terms. I said this, I don't know if I said this last week in Bible study. Amen. I'll say it again. The way you approach the Bible, I said it last Sunday. The way you approach the Bible and understand the scriptures is the way you live. So if you approach the word with a mindset of defeat, all you will find is defeat. And so we, we struggle with difficult things in our Christian walk, okay, because we approach the word of God most times from the flesh. We're not approaching it spiritually because if the word of God and the promises of God are yes and amen, I'm not approaching the scriptures to add to my problems. I'm searching the scripture to be delivered from my problems. I wish I had a church in here that, that studied the word. And so if God told me that his promises, his word does not return unto him void, but I have a void in my life, I need the word of God to fill that void. But the only way that's going to happen, let me see if I can back this thing up. The only way that's going to happen is not just through your salvation. Oh, I got to park the car right here for a moment. Let me put this sucker in park. Like an old Electra 225. You got to put some strength in that one. Pull that one up. Because if you're saved, born again, but your mind has not changed, you still stay chained to your past. That's why Paul would say in Ephesians 4.23, you got to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. That's why you got to have the word. Jesus says in John 15, for those who are taking notes, he says the word cleanses you. David said it like this. How shall a young man, young woman clean up their life? He says by taking heed to the word. So the word of God, when you study this word, Amen. I know y'all ladies, y'all keep y'all house so clean that angels fly around. Y'all go to the house, angels just flying because it's so clean. They just, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. You did the work to produce the cleanness. 
So when you study to show yourself approved, under God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, the word of God begins to move in your spirit and begins to remove those things from your mind that are unpure, those things that are filthy. I wish I had some Bible students in here. Let me see if I can make it plain. Amen. You used to have perverted thoughts, but when you started getting in the word of God and the word of God started purging your mind, now you have pure thoughts. And to the pure, all things are pure. Amen. Amen. You used to think negative about people. You saw somebody and the first thought that came to your mind was something negative. But now, because you get in the word of God and the word of God begins to cleanse your mind and cleanse your soul, now you look for a way to bless folks. Anybody other than me, you ask God, show me who I can bless this week. Show me who I can help this week. Amen. Show me who I can help their lives become better because your mind has been changed. And what the devil celebrates and what the devil banks on, I don't care, I'll let them come to church. They can sing wonderful songs, they can line hymns, they can even preach. But if I can keep them out of the book, if I can keep them out of the blank, the game plan, if I can get them to stay dumb to what God has given them, his children, to defeat me, I'll still win. Mm. And, and I, I used to say this. I used to say this. And, and I get it now. I get it now. Because I, I always scratch my head, you know. Uh, you know, Sunday school and Bible study is two of the greatest opportunities to learn the word. And, and, and they're two of the most unattended services we have in the week. And, 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 but I, I got it. I said, okay, the Holy Spirit to show me. He said, listen. What make you think they're going to come study here if they're not studying there? <laughs> See, you don't wait for Sunday or Wednesday to study this. If you're waiting for us to feed you, you're going to starve. If you're hungry, amen, some of y'all hungry right now. Your stomach touching your back. Amen. You say, I hope he hurry up soon. Amen. You so hungry right now. Amen. You on your phone texting reservations right now. Amen. Put me down for 130. Yeah, now 1230. Yeah. When you hungry for truth, you won't make an excuse. Okay, okay. Ah. Can I can we just talk this morning? People do what they want to do. Some of us have been broke up and hurting. But you still, I don't care, your, your knee hurt, your back hurt, but you had to get to the dog track before the Quinella ran. Right, 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 right. You made it, listen, I know some of y'all young folks, this is going to mess you up, amen, amen. I don't care how late it was, you was going to make it to the high lie. <laughs> I went there, didn't I? Because people do what they want to do. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me get into the text. Let me get into the text. Let me get into the text. So Paul, Paul says this. Let me, let me make this plain. He says, as I was reading chapter 6, he said, you walk in the newness of life. Verse 5 in Romans 6. He says, if we be planted together in the likeness of his death, you shall be also in the likeness of a resurrection. God sees us as dying when Christ died on the cross. Because Christ died for sin. You that God made is good, but the sin was bad. So God said, in order for them to be good in my sight or righteous, I reckon them to be dead with Christ because he died for sin. And when he died for sin, God says, I reckon you to be baptized or buried with Christ with sin. But just like he was buried, three days later he was resurrected. That's why Paul says in Ephesians 2, he said, you who are quickened, who were dead in their sins and their trespasses. Some of us, y'all look, y'all see everybody around here. Some of us, amen, we can't keep our mouth shut talking about the goodness of God. Why? Because we've been resurrected. We don't associate with the old man because the old man is dead. Amen. I don't know anybody here right now got the gall to go out to Royal Palm Cemetery with some shovels and some picks and just start digging up graves just because you ain't got nothing to do. Amen. As soon as you start doing that, we're going to baker at you. Amen. Because it makes no sense 
to try to go get something that's dead that no longer has life something that's been buried and no longer has activity why that you are alive want to go play with dead things he said Christ has made you alive. He has quickened you. That's why, God, help me in this house today. That's why there was times where the devil messes with you and tries to get you in depression, but all of a sudden you feel something moving down on the inside. Amen. The devil, he ate hey, somebody come around you with all this negativity, and all of a sudden you feel an unction. All of a sudden, you don't even know what to say. You start humming, amen, because you understand that's dead. Depression doesn't help me. Anger doesn't help me. Failure doesn't help me. Talking about folks doesn't help me. But Christ has made me alive. And if any man be in Christ, I got a new pulse because I got a new soul. I got a new pulse because I got a new heart. I got a new walk because I've been endowed by the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul says, reckon yourself. Let me hurry my time. He says, just like God reckons you to be dead. Verse, drop down to verse 11 in Romans 6. He says, likewise, reckon or consider yourself dead indeed to sin, but alive through God in Christ Jesus. I don't know about these little kids today. Amen, like your nephew, Brother McNair. Amen, but we was kids, we used to have to go outside. We had to go outside and play. And fellas, y'all, and ladies, y'all might remember this too, but fellas, y'all remember we used to play cowboys and Indians? Stay with me, stay with me. We played cowboys and Indians, amen. And, and, and if you got shot, okay, you had to, ah. Oh. Right, right. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. You had to play like you were dead. Now a child had a mindset to understand the rules of a game. That when you shoot me, I gotta play like I'm dead. God help me today. So if I can play a game and somebody shoot me and I play like I'm dead, but now I'm a grown person. And I understand that sin is dead to me. So when sin tries to knock at my door, I don't have to play like I'm dead because the old man is dead. I wish somebody would walk in here with me today. Amen. And so you got to get your mindset that the old man is dead. Can I help somebody who's trying to get other folks to understand you now? They scratching their head because you don't change and Amen. They say, we want the old you back. The old you was fun. You used to fuss. Amen. You used to fight and cuss folks out. You say, uh -uh, that person dead. Amen. He dead. They don't live anymore because what they want, because they benefited from your fleshly activity. But what they don't understand, that did not give them anything in life. Let me get to the text. Look at Romans. Amen. I ain't got enough time. In verse 20, listen to what Paul says. He says, for when, somebody say when. when, when you were servants, this word servant means a slave, someone who is bound by another. He says, for when you were servants of sin, when you were servants of sin. In Romans 7 and 5, it says, and when you were in the flesh and the motions of sin, which by word by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. He says, when you were servants of sin. I just said earlier, Sister Doretha joined a retirement club, all right? Amen, amen. She used to serve on her job. Reverend Thomas used to serve on his job. Sister Burns, all you who are retired, amen, amen. You're no longer serving on that job. You've been relieved. It looks real crazy if you get up tomorrow morning and put on your work clothes and get your old badge that has been deactivated, by the way, and try to go to that job. Why? You don't work there anymore, so you can't serve. You can't serve anywhere you've been retired from. Can I? I wish somebody walked with me. See, see, when I retired from sin, I don't work for sin anymore. When I retired from doing darkness 
I don't work for darkness anymore. I look crazy trying to go back to what God has retired me from through Christ Jesus. And you've got to get the mindset that the old man has been retired. He no longer works for the spirit of darkness. He no longer does things that he used to do because he has been made free from the power of sin. He said, when you were servants of sin. See, folks, amen, y'all know y'all see, folks, hey, you can't tell me what to do. I'm grown. Baby, when you're bound by sin, sin will tell you what to do. Sin will control you. Sin will dominate you. Sin will change your life. And it's not just yours only. I'm going to get to that in a moment. He says, when you were servants to sin, you were free from righteousness. Why? Because you can't serve sin and be right at the same time. Lord, have mercy. You can't serve two masters. Either you serve in sin or you serve in righteousness. Either you serve in the devil or you serve in God. There is no gray area. That fence we used to say, straddling the fence, that ain't no fence. That's something man made of. God says in Revelations, you either be hot or you be cold. He said, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to throw you out. Amen. So that tells us that once you are in the body, if you don't stay hot, you're going to be in a position where God may release you from the body because you went back to your sin. And when God says, I'll release you, that means vomit. Amen. Nobody here likes vomit. But when you walk away from God to go back to sin, the Bible says in Proverbs, it's like a dog going back to eat his own vomit. Oh, that's nasty. But that's the way God sees it. Because I've given you my goodness. I've given you my grace. I've given you my kindness. I've given you my favor. I've given you my blessings. And you're going to have the audacity to look me in the face and consider the going back to vomit. I picked you up out the vomit. I cleaned the vomit off of you. I washed you up. I changed your mind. I delivered your heart. I made you free. I don't care what kind of hell that you're going through. You've got to fight against sin. You've got to fight against your path. You've got to fight to stay delivered. Oh. You couldn't go to righteousness. He says in verse 21, he says, what fruit, what benefit? See, in this house today, there's either fruit of righteousness a fruit of unrighteousness. See, here's something you got to learn. You can't just judge folks just because they show up in church. If I see you somewhere tomorrow at 2.23 p.m. and you in the grocery store, I should be, and you say that you are a child of God, I ate a, I'll be able to come up to you and get some love off your tree. We're talking about fruit. If you say you're a child of God, amen, and I come around the corner and I see the cashier just talking to you all kind of bad and all kind of stuff, amen, I should be able to go to you and pull some meekness off. Because why is she cussing you out? You're saying, Lord, I thank you. That your grace is sufficient. I thank you that the old man is dead. Father, I pray right now, give me a quick word <laughs> that I can release. <laughs> in the you ever have to minister to yourself? You better learn how to minister to yourself. David said, I learned how to encourage myself in the Lord. He said it wasn't fruitful. And the Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter number 5, verse number 11, it says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them. Light don't hang out with darkness. The Bible says, what fellowship has Christ with idols? See, as a Christian, a true born-again believer, you have to flee from darkness, not entertain it. And I think in the body of Christ as a whole, we become so comfortable and complacent with just settling with a low life lifestyle that anything goes and God's supposed to accept it. 
We want to give God the bare minimum that we can give him. And then we come and say, Lord, bless me. That's the struggle. Paul said darkness don't have no fruit. That's why we got to shun darkness. That's why if you're a new believer, if you're young in the faith, you got to find some good folks to hang around. Amen. You need to find somebody that's shown enough, shown enough. You, if you're a new believer, you need to find somebody that's going to talk to you on your level, not judge and condemn you. They're able to share their wounds and their stories, amen, not to condone what you're going through, but to help you become healed. Oh, let me, let me, let me, let me hurry on. Let me hurry on because my time is almost up. Paul says, he says, he says, what fruit had you in those things whereof you are now ashamed for the end of those things are death? For the end of those things are death. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to come down for this one. Amen. I'm going to have to come down for this one. Uh, uh, I'm going to take my phone with me. I got to come down for this one. Uh, yeah, I'm coming down. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I'm coming down. Amen. Somebody help me with this, this thing right here. I'm almost there now. Amen. I'm almost there. Amen. I'm almost there. Amen. There you go. Yeah, right there, right there. I need to come down. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Amen. So, so thank you, Deep. So check this out. I need to come down here because I need to show you something. Okay. So Paul says, Paul says in verse number 21, he says, what fruit had you in those things where you're now ashamed for the end of those things are death? So he says, sin makes you a slave or you're bound to death. Yeah, th thank you, Reverend. He says, sin makes you a slave it makes you bound to death. Let me see if I can make this plain. Uh, Brother Anthony, can I have you come up? And so here's what happened when it comes to sin. And so here, stay with me so you don't take this personal. I'm trying to teach you this morning. Turn around and face the audience. Amen. Amen. This is a Johnson son. Amen. I know because she had him. Anyway, so uh, here it is. God made man in his image and in his likeness, right? There is no sin in God. Okay. In Genesis 1 and 2. So when man sinned, what, what Adam didn't see when he entered into sin is that he was going to become a slave. And so what Adam couldn't realize is that sin was arresting him. Okay? So now, stay with me, stay with me. So now, because he yielded to Satan's voice... And for teaching purposes, let me make sure I'm on the camera right. This is all teaching purposes. Amen. <laughs> teaching purposes. Okay, I'm using proverbs and parables to teach. And so for teaching purposes, now Satan is now controlling him. And so Satan now controls Adam. The word Adam in Hebrew simply means man. So the reason why so many of our men are not in the right and proper place because they were born into sin, now Satan takes them anywhere you want them to go. Huh? Satan said, come over here, man, get some of this crack. Now I made you to lead your wife and your children that you don't even have yet. But listen, before your wife even come, I'm already controlling you. Check it out. So if he never gets free from his sin, and he come to church, and church rules say, okay, you, you, you a man, you should have a wife. And he don't know the truth of God's word. Stand up a little bit because we're going to echo. And he don't know the truth of God's word because man say he should get a wife. But what he don't understand, he need to get his freedom first. Okay? And so here it is. Now, he listen to what church folks say. Stand over here a little bit. Amen. This is teaching purposes. Come here, Sister Tamika. Can I use you? Amen. So he sees Sister Tamika. She said, okay, she looked like a good candidate. Amen. I want to marry her. Amen. So now, amen. Okay. Because now she grew up without a father. And a father never affirmed her. And because she was looking for approval from men, 
She let men use her any way that they wanted to because they acknowledged her value. God, help me here today. So here it is now. He did not get free from his sin, and he marries a woman who was still bound by her sin, and now they're bound together. So now, here it is. You know, they don't got married, and they do what married folks do. Keisha. Keisha, come here, sweetie. Amen. So they do what married folks do. So now that mama is bound in her sin, amen. Now they come together, come over here, sweetie, and guess what? Now they have children in this union, and guess what? Y'all see them come to church, they look so good, but spiritually you don't see they're bound. Oh, God. So because the man was never taught what manhood looks like from God's perspective, he thinks that if he do all the external things, that looks good and everything will be good. But what he don't understand, because he's still bound by sin, he can't reach his potential. And because he's bound by sin, now he's yoked together with his wife, and he doesn't have the anointing to release her to be the helper that she can be. And because they're bound by sin and controlled by sin, they train up a child in sin. Oh, my God. Lord, have mercy. And this is what most folks look like in church. They clap hands in the choir. They line hymns. And, and, and you keep hearing rumors. You don't know if it's true. You keep hearing rumors. Uh, you know, uh, Reverend so-and-so beat his wife. No, he can't, but I see him in church. Church folks don't beat people. They don't do that. You say, no, he don't do that because he lined him 454 like he wrote it. Yeah. It's a... I can't do that. Let me stop. Let me stay in my lane. And so check this out. Check this out. And because the people who put him in leadership didn't have spiritual discernment to see that he's still bound, you know why they don't have spiritual discernment? Because they still bound in sin. So how is sin going to call out sin? So since nobody has the audacity to go before God to get their spiritual freedom in the Lord, we settle in church and everybody say, oh, it's okay to sin every now and then. God understands. Well, if God understands, why did he have to send his son to die for the thing that we compromise in? Ah. I hope somebody's receiving their deliverance right now. And so here it is. They just learn how to cope. And, and what the baby is doing, because she see the hell that's going on in the house, she 14, 15, 16, 17. She can't wait till she get out the house. Y'all ever notice that most children that grow up in church are the first ones to leave church and start living lifestyles? that make you say, oh my God, I didn't raise them like that. Yes, you did, because when you lived the life of sin in front of them, you were training them up in the way they should go. So they turn out just the way they saw, because children learn by what they see, not what you teach. Ah, oh God, I wish that. And so we got a dilemma here, because God needs a free church today, Sister Tiffany. Family, I, 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 I think we're trying to be oblivious of what's going on in this world. Do we understand that this world has legislated and passed laws that it's okay to live in sin? We have a country that has said we approve and legalize two men to get married and two women to get married. And you better accept it. To the perversion that there are some churches who have now compromised and said, well, we think God don't care. Churches. And so now everyone is looking at the church because they judge the whole church by one church. Just because you come to a church don't mean you belong to Christ. Ah, God. 
I wish I had how much time I got here. And so, so, so we have a challenge here because the world is in darkness. And how long do you think God is going to sit back idle? The Bible says in Romans chapter 1 that the wrath of God is against all unrighteousness. So these things that are happening in the world, it's no coincidence. We're starting to see the wrath of God manifesting in this world because the world is shaking its hand in God's face and say, we do whatever we want to do, and God, you better accept it. The devil is a liar. He said, be holy because I am holy. Be righteous because I am righteous. Walk in integrity because I'm integrity. Walk in truth because I'm in truth. But it's going to take people. I'm almost done. Because thank God for verse 22. Thank God for verse 22. Because verse 22 says, but now, somebody say now. now. Being made free from sin. Lord, have mercy. And become servants to God. You have fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. Now, in verse number 20, huh, the verse, 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 verse number 20, the word servant means to be made a slave. In verse 22, servant means to become a slave. Oh, okay, let me see if I can help you out. See, they had to be made slaves back in the day. You were made to serve sin. But when you're set free, you choose to serve God because he's the one that set you free. So God says, okay, I got to make a way so this man can become free so he can walk in liberty, so he can help his wife become free, so they can walk to liberty together. How can two walk together lest they agree? And when they walk in agreement, they can help the child get free. So when Jesus comes, Jesus tells his disciples that he gives revelation from Peter that he is the Christ, the son of the living God. He says, Pete, 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 I'm going to give to you the keys of the kingdom. So I don't want to just look free. I want to be free. So, so somebody, we got a problem. They locked up. They can't let it. How am I going to get this thing off me? <laughs> but see, Jesus got the keys. Jesus got the keys. Because who the son has the keys, who the son has the keys, who the son has the keys can set free. So now I got the keys to take the bondage that's holding man back. Check this out, check this out. So I got the key to come let the man free. Check it out, check it out though, that ain't just it. See, now he's free and he walks in his freedom, but his wife still bound because I got the keys, I let him free, and now I'm able to give him some keys <laughs> because I'm going back to glory. And now he got the keys to be able to help his wife become set free. And so now she's free. And now he can teach her. And now he can give her some keys. And now she can help the children get free. God help me in this house today. And so now, hallelujah, everybody was bound. But now they're free because I got the keys to the kingdom. God, thank you. It said right here. In verse number 22, it said that when he was set free, he became a servant unto righteousness. And see, you see what? I didn't even have to tell him. When a man is set free, he takes the initiative to help his family get free. I didn't tell Anthony to move and set them free. It's all because when the Holy Ghost begins to move on the outside, it moves on the inside. Hold on, y'all listen. Listen, y'all saw that? I didn't even tell him. They started walking free because when the sun sets you free. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. He's smiling now. She's smiling now. She got a mask on, but she's smiling. She always smiling. Listen, listen, listen. Because of what Jesus did. Listen, stay with me. Because what Jesus did, generations got set free. How many people in here today, how many people online, you living in generational curses? Bound by what your parents' parents did. And Satan controls you. 
And here it is. You got the keys to liberty. And we sit and try to portray to other folks that we free. We scream and holler in church and leave bound. That done played out. God wants some free folks. Why? Because when I become free, y'all saw what Anthony did? This wasn't playing. Did I talk to any of y'all? Did y'all know what he was doing? I had to go to Deacon Hayes and say, what's your grandbaby name? <laughs> I couldn't remember. I'm sorry. I couldn't remember the baby name. Hey, y'all got these unique names. What happened to Tammy and Bridget? Okay. <laughs> but you saw what he did. When he got free, Brother Henderson, he immediately went to his wife and then went to his child. And that's what the devil has succeeded in. Too many of our men are bound. Brothers, I want to talk to y'all. I know y'all struggle. I know it's, it's a struggle. Because God has put so much on us. But he's not telling you to do it by yourself. He said, I'll never leave you. He said, I won't forsake you. If you want to know how to lead your wife, ask me. You want to know how to be a good father to your children, ask me. Do we understand we got grown folks in church who are still bound by what daddy did to them? And we think a hat or a suit going to cover that up? And here it is, Satan, through our ignorance, is controlling people in the church while we sing in songs about freedom, but not living in freedom. Somebody ought to get upset about that. Because who the son is set free? Now, guess what? Check this out. Check this out. I'm, I'm finishing up. What time it is, Reverend Tom? Oh, okay. We good. We good. We good. Good. Check it out, check it out, check it out. I'm almost done, check it out. What he didn't know, he's operating the biblical principle. Because first, home got to be free. The Bible says if a man don't have his own house in order, he has no authority to lead in God's house. Because God knows that what's in the man at home He's going to bring it to God's home. So now he's qualified to go and serve in the church because now his family is in God's order. Amen. Y'all can have a seat. Y'all can have a seat. I mean, y'all get him a hand. So Paul says in verse 22, but now being made free from sin, I become servants of God. I close with this. Listen, this here is real. I, I wish I could sit here and say being a believer, a true believer, was easy, but you got to work. The Bible says work out your salvation. It doesn't say work for it. You got to work to walk in holiness. You have to be intentional to walk in holiness. This is why it takes discipline as a child of God to live a life that honors God. As a man of God, I can't go everywhere. Most of the time, well, thank God I done graduated. If I'm not at church, I'm like, I work from home. I'm home because I don't trust my flesh in all places. Because I know that the lifestyle that I live as a man of God is going to do one or two things. Either my light is going to shine and help people to draw closer to the Lord, or if I get caught up in some foolishness, it's going to give the devil an opportunity to say, see, he just like the rest of us. I take my calling serious. Do we understand that lives are being lost and they're not saved? So the sermon title of the day was, if it's free, it's for me. And the freedom that God has given is that everything that had you bound, everything that controlled you, everything that had dominion over you, when he was resurrected from that grave, one, two, three days later, he rose with all authority in heaven and earth. This is why Jesus says, for those who believe in me, they shall tread. 
on those things that used to control you. God help us in here today. You shall tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means of the enemy can hurt or harm you. See, when you understand this is warfare, Sister Thomas, you got to fight. You got to know what the devil looks like. See, can I just make it plain? See, yeah, can, let me just make it plain for somebody who's trying to get this. Okay, yeah, home, you're in here. See, yeah, okay, yeah, I got on the, okay, my, my colors match. look good, don't it? Okay, blue and my, match. Okay, that don't mean nothing. I get tempted just like y'all. Okay? God blessed me with a beautiful woman. I ain't the only beautiful woman he made. I'm making it plain. So the motions of my flesh, if I feed my flesh, I'm going to want to be interested in something else in a woman that God never ordained. So I have to do what the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9. I have to bring my flesh under control. Because he says in Romans, go to chapter number 7, he said, there's nothing good in my flesh. I can't watch everything on TV. Because TV, TV used to be clean. Huh? If a woman had on, she, when she had on a bathing suit, it was like a dress. <laughs> now folks naked on free TV. I'm talking about me because I got to intentionally walk in holiness. I can't watch everything on TV because I know that's a trigger for my flesh. And God says I'm supposed to have my flesh under control. No disrespect to New Pleasant Grove. I love y'all, but I stay back in that office up to like the last moment because you come with stuff that's fleshly before I got to preach. And I'm trying to stay focused. And you coming with, hey, I, uh, my toe hurt. Pray for my toe, pastor. I'm being sarcastic. But you had, listen, you had all week to call me. Those know you, if you can't get me, leave a message. I'll get back to you. All week. We got to stay focused. Why? Lives are in balance. So if it's free, it's for me. They were bound, but now they're free. I was bound, but now I'm free. That's what the song says. How'd that song go, Brother Mike? I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me, my soul is resting, and it's such a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free, it's about Father. I pray in the name of Jesus. God, you said in your word to the pure, all things are pure. And I pray that the pureness of this word has fallen into good soil. I thank you for men and women who are adults, that the chains of their past have fallen off. That the things that had them bound and controlled them. Because the devil taught us in sin to medicate our sin. Find some drugs to cover your pain. Start drinking to cover your pain. Women sleeping with many men you want to. Men sleep with many women you want to. Cover my pain. Not understanding that when you turn to the world to cover your pain, you created more pain. And now you self-imprison yourself. But I'm so glad to know that over 2,000 years ago, God sent the warden all the way down from heaven, came down through 42 generations, and he had the keys to the kingdom, keys to set the captive free. That's why he says, when he goes to Luke chapter number four and they give him the scroll, he says, this is the day. I am the one 
that God has sent. It has been fulfilled. For I'm anointed to preach to the captives. I'm anointed to set them free. I'm anointed to do great deliverance in the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus to set us free. Now God, I know this is private. I bind the spirit of pride right now. Brother Mike, God bless you. Thank God for your gifts. Amen. Brother Witcher, thank you for your gift, but I want y'all to stop playing for a moment because I want to make sure I'm clear in hearing this because I know it's a real thing. And I know there's people in this house today. This message resonated in your soul today. Yeah. Some of you, you're very uncomfortable. I can tell by your body language because it, you felt like, how did he know? I don't need to know. I know the God knows the bondage of sin and how he wants you to be free. But like I said earlier, when something free is being offered to you, number one, you got to know that it's available. And Jesus died on that cross for the thing that still has you bound. He died once to sin forever. And he has set you free and you're walking in bondage that's been offered to you because it's available. Number two, he paid the price. He who knew no sin became sin. He put on the shackles of lying. He put on the shackles of adultery. He put on the shackles of fornication. He put on the shackles of uh, uh, all types of perverseness because he became the sin that he has convinced you to still be bound by. And so he paid the price so you didn't. And number three, you got to receive it. You gotta receive your freedom. So God, I pray right now for souls today. In this house online, God, for somebody who may be looking at this message at a later time, who's looking at it right now, it's Tuesday afternoon, Thursday morning, and they somehow came across this message and they, why is that man holding handcuffs? Because if you go back and listen to the whole sermon, it's speaking to you that God wants you to be. I declare and decree in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, for every soul that's willing to receive the gift of freedom from the bondage of sin right now in the name of Jesus, in the spirit realm, shackles are starting to move. In the spirit realm, you're being set free. And there's spiritual, biblical reference to this. God had the man of God, Reverend Thomas, to preach from this. That when Paul and Silas, they were shackled and chained up, not for their own sake, because there were other people in chains and in prison. But when Paul and Silas, who had been freed from the bondage of sin, begin to lift up that name that's above every name and begin to praise God, that all the prison doors were open. And all the prisoners were set free. So God, I declare the truth of your word from the book of Acts that souls are set free today, never to be bound again. I thank you for women who've been abused by men and have a negative self-image. You've allowed men to do some despicable things to you and you've allowed that to become your identity. The devil is a liar. You are a woman that's wonderfully and fearfully made in God's image. God loves you so much that your mind can't even interpret the love that he has for you. But the devil has convinced you that you are nothing, but the devil is a liar. You better read John chapter 8, 44. He is a liar and the father of lies, and there is no truth in him. You are a proverbial woman, a woman that's after God's own heart. For every man that's been abandoned by a father, you never had the affirmation of your value from your father. You are a son of God. God loves you, man of God. He never will leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. And all you got to do is believe. So, Father, we thank you. I thank you, Lord, today that just like the woman who was brought to you in John 8, she was chained 
by a spirit of adultery. But when she met the warden of her soul, he had the keys to set her free. And he said, all y'all who has no sin, because they were also imprisoned in sin. Lord, have mercy. So the warden, Jesus, the only one that was sin free, he set the woman free and says, go. And no longer walk, walk in the bondage of adultery. Because who the son sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name. That's right, baby. That baby just said in Jesus' name. Our heads are still bowed and eyes are closed. If you're in this house or online and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, we give you opportunity today. You may be sitting there thinking, Pastor, you don't know how hard my life is. You don't know what I'm going through. And the only thing I can say to you is, you still want to keep going through it? He's provided freedom. It's free to you. It's being offered. The price has already been paid. And all you got to do is believe. If that's you today, just say, Pastor, I want them keys. I want Christ. I want those keys to be free. That's you right where you sit or right where you stand. You say, Lord, if it's free, if salvation is free, I want it. I want to be free. I want to be delivered. I don't want the chains of my past arresting me anymore. I want to be free in you. Thank you, God. I believe that Jesus died to set me free. And I receive my freedom. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you've been encouraged by the word today, give God some praise. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes. Oh, man. We, we, we getting ready to go. But I pray in the name of Jesus. Now, normally when I do props, I give the props away, but these are handcuffs. And I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> Rev. Thomas, I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> I'm going to leave that alone. God's still working on some folk. <laughs> I'm going to keep that prop. I'm going to use that one again. Before we leave, that, before, we leave, leave, before we leave today, uh, someone has, has misplaced their keys. Did you hear that? Somebody misplaced their keys. See, she want what's rightfully hers. <laughs> Y'all better, better come get me. Y'all better come get me. <laughs> Y'all better come get me. Y'all better come get me. Amen, amen, amen. Y'all better come. When we're done, when we're done. Amen. Stand to your feet. Amen. Let's get prepared to go. Amen. If you were encouraged by the word today, can you give God your best praise? Woo! Woo! Let's look to the Lord. Father, we thank you today. Oh, God, you moved. You stepped your foot in here today. Oh, God, you kicked some stuff over today. God, you moved some furniture today. God, thank you that you war for us. Thank you that you war for our souls, God. And God, I thank you today that somebody leaves this place not only singing a song about being free, but living in freedom. Now may the love of God, the freedom of God, woo, the deliverance of God, and the peace of God Forever be bound to your soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Ain't God good? <laughs> <laughs>